matters we're going to take as housekeeping matters on the agenda uh, because they are um, either being continued or otherwise withdrawn. So we'll deal with that first and then start my meeting. That's a feedback. Um, okay. Here we go. Just a second. We'll get started. It is just about seven o'clock. Uh, so I will try to begin our uh, zoning board appeals meeting for the agenda evening of November 22nd, 2022. And happy uh, pending holidays for everyone. Uh, everyone listening via Zoom. My name is Rob Champetti. I'm the uh, zoning board appeals chair. I'm going to take a moment to just introduce our board, um, and then we will establish a forum, establish voting members. Although we have a full, um, a full CBA this evening. One of our ultimate members will be uh, will be our voting member, uh, unless actually you know, we have full voting members in our in our CBA members. So uh, every member of the zoning board sitting up here at tables will be participating, whether they're an alternate or a CBA member proper. They will be participating in all of the deliberations, questions, uh, and every other facet except the vote. Um, alternates are in place in the event there's a conflict or a recusal that's needed or otherwise an absence. So that we can have a full hour as close to a full board as possible. I'll explain what that is in just a moment. And we'll dive right into this evening's business. Uh, we'll start by just taking roll and establish whether we have a form to begin this evening's business. Um, starting uh, uh, from the roll, I guess please respond with a here or present. Ken Swan, here. Mr. Stephen Gillette, here. Uh, Mr. Gregory Bennett, here. Mr. Bud Chen, here. Mr. Lynn Scott, here. And Ms. Patricia Peck, here. That is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven members present. Our five voting members will be myself, Mr. Swanton, Mr. Delisle, uh, Mr. Beck, uh, Mr. Bennett, and Mr. Channing. Uh, and Ms. Scott and Ms. Technic will be uh, alternates in case of recusal needed. Uh, so we have established our forum, called our role, and we'll dive right into the public hearings. Before we do, um, I'll just take a moment and deal with a few requests for continuances. So we can get those out of the way for anyone that might be logged on uh, via Zoom this evening. Um, if we, uh, when we get to the business of any public hearing, typically what I do is I will then first, uh, when we get to a public comment section, and I'll explain the flow in a moment, uh, I will first hear from any members uh, of the public who wish to speak in connection with an application who are present in the room. Uh, and then we'll, of course, go through by show of hands uh, anyone who is logged on remote uh, to hear from you. and. If you could just simply click on the raise hand button, um, we will uh, we'll unmute your mic and then just give your name and address for the record. And we will we ask uh, that with any public comment that we um, respect the sort of uh, I'll, I'll say the non-formal but formal guidelines of trying to keep the remarks to within about two minutes. I as chair have discretion and I often exercise that as we be just to allow folks to you know get to give them thought and such, but. If, it, if it's running very long, I try to be as gentle as possible and as courteous to, um, to uh, let that individual know uh, to kind of wrap things up so that others can be heard as well. Um, to my immediate right, I'm going to take a moment and introduce uh, others that are sitting here at tables. Uh, we have Mr. Andy Ford, our, um, our um, uh, planning director, Ms. Caitlin Sullivan, our city planner, and Ms. Gretchen Joy, our, our fearless keeper of the minutes. So when, uh, if you do stand and speak or or otherwise just speak from your remote seat at home, just please give your name and address so that Ms. Joy can uh, record the minutes. Okay, so um, essentially what we'll do when we get started, we're gonna start with taking the uh, matters on that have been requested for continuance. Um, I will read first the public notice and the notice that's going out uh, in the newspaper and otherwise to any of others. It's the legal notice establishing the who, what, when, where, and why. 
every application that is to say that I'll read the name of the applicant or their representative, attorney, architect, um, or otherwise their representative, or the applicant themselves um, by name will then give the address. Uh, I will then read just a descriptor from the legal notice of what that applicant is seeking in the form of relief, whether it is say, for instance, a variance or a um, special permit, a special permit for non-conformance. Whatever the applicant is seeking in the form of relief, I'll also describe that beyond simply using the label variance, special permit, and I'll simply say in real world, with real sort of live speak, uh, you know, regular speech, what they're seeking to expand a, uh, an outside porch to uh, do an addition, something like that that makes it pretty clear um, whether you may able to see materials online or not, uh, what this application is all about. I do encourage everyone, if you haven't already, everything that's being referenced by any applicant or any uh, presenter is going to be pulled up on the Zoom screen. It'll show up behind me here in the room. Uh, it'll also show up on your screen if you're logged on remotely. Uh, but I encourage anyone, if you wish, and you're in front of the computer, simply go to the City of Newbridge Board and Zoning Board of Appeals site, pull up the agenda, and you can click on all of these materials yourself. So um, again, keep in mind that we'll be curating the materials that are being referenced, so you really don't have to, but if you wish to, that's how you do it. All right, um, we begin by reading the legal notice. I will then um, uh, ask for um, the, uh, we'll go ask the legal notice, I'll go to public comment. That's when anyone who wishes to speak in connection with the application will uh, make themselves known and uh, come take the podium, uh, take a microphone, and uh, we'll go through the room, and once we've gone through the room, we'll go through anyone who raises their hand at home. Uh, and once we have closed the public comment section, we'll then go to questions from the board. That's when we go in order, beginning with Mr. Swan, by the left, all the way around this packet to our far left. Uh, any questions that board members may have of the applicant or in connection with the application are asked there. Keep in mind, if you make a public comment um, and it is in the form of a question, please know that we need you know, this courtesy and we don't directly address and answer your question. It is no uh, intent of disrespect, but rather just adherence to uh, the uh, form of Robert's move of order. Know well, though, that we will take in and hear that question if you pose a comment in the form of a question. Members of the CBA, myself included, uh, we take notes, we know that, and you may well, if not certainly, will hear <laughs> your question in some form uh, by a member of the CBA post for you. So uh, just simply make your comment and if it's a question, that's fine, know that we will get to it. Um, after we close the public comment and we close the questions from the board, we go to deliberations. We go again in order um, by member, and uh, each member will deliberate the legal criteria that the applicant must meet, whether they have met that criteria, whether they, um, whether that seems to be a challenge in the mind of that CDA member. We discuss out loud uh, and in full sort of public view uh, by ear and by eye what we're, what we're thinking. And that, you know, it's essentially the audience's way to, um, to observe the uh, thinking of the CDA as it's involved. As we go through those deliberations, uh, we will close deliberations when we complete, at which point I will ask a member of the CBA to pose uh, to put a motion to approve on the table. A motion to approve is just made in the affirmative. Again, in the format of Robert's rules, it does not mean that that member wishes to or intends to support the application, but merely procedurally, it's done in, in the affirmative um, a version of a motion to approve. That motion must then be seconded. Once the motion is made and seconded, I'll call the roll. Uh, and we will take a vote. In order for an application to be successful, it must have at least four votes in the affirmative of the five voting members. And if it does, the motion carries and passes, and the application is approved. That's essentially the flow of uh, our evening and every evening in CBA. So uh, with uh, with that, I will now open the first application, uh, which is the request to continue. This is the matter, uh, and it's a continued matter from May 10th, 2022. It's uh, Headling Real Estate LLC, Chair of East Main Detail and Costa LLC. The application is 193 High Street. It's an application, an appeal, a notice of violation of zoning enforcement officer dated uh, 5619. This has been um, uh, requested to be continued. Uh, I actually, other than a procedural reading of that request for continuance, I, uh, to uh, conflict of interest, must accuse myself from being in that um, application subsequently. But, um, we will, um, we have a request, and I will turn it over to um, Vice Chair Mr. Swanton to deal with any vote um, or any um, uh, wish by the uh, by the applicant representative on being heard on the request for continuance. And otherwise, we'll get through that um, that request. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also will need to repeat myself. Thank you. Very good. Um, thank you, Mr. Lyle. Um, any other recusals of the board before we, uh, we press on? Okay, seeing no hands. Uh, with my refusal and Mr. Delisle's refusal, 
Um, we are going to be down uh, two voting members, so Ms. Scow and Ms. Peckett will step up and be part of the vote on uh, simply on the linear matter of the request to continue. Um, that will hold true if there's any other um, two people's refusal uh, that's necessary this evening. So uh, with that, Mr. Swanton, um, I will uh, turn it over to you for um, getting through the rest of that procedure. Okay, with that, I guess the first question is, is does the applicant want to say anything about I don't know if they're even here about why they want to continue this. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, for the record, um, Ben Taylor, uh, covering for Attorney Lisa Mead, uh, Mead Tellerman and Costa, during Green Street and your report. Um, I don't have much for comments other than what was in our uh, cover letter requesting this continuous, uh, other than we'd like it continue to your February uh, 14th meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay, so um, yes, I'm yeah. You want to make a motion? Or no, I, I just have one question. All right, that was one. Could you give us an uh, update on where things stand before the planning board and uh, getting this done? Uh, so, we just, that make it, so we can understand the reason for this request. Sure. So, um, Actually, I'm not saying you're in CBA, but um, some of you may be aware uh, this was uh, there was also a land court case involved uh, regarding an appeal of uh, ZBA's denial of some special permit applications. Um, that case is still ongoing. The court did issue a decision, but the appeal period still needs to run, as well as a potential remand uh, related to, to that decision. So, in order for that to play out fully, um, we believe. Uh, February 14th is an appropriate uh, time for which to extend this. If I just have a follow-up question, I mean, this has been continued for many times for years. Uh, you seem to have a little confidence that perhaps in February, it may not be continuing yet again. Do you think there's light at the end of the tunnel? Um, I hope so. I mean that the again the reason it's continued to February is with the understanding that this can move forward. Obviously, the appeal period has to run. Uh, that'll be up in early December. I don't have the exact date on the top of my head, um, but again, this request was was made with um, you know looking forward. Okay. With that, are there any other questions for the applicant or anyone else here on the board? And with that, is there a motion to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Uh, motion to continue uh, 2019 042 193 High Street to February 14, 2022. There's a second. Second. All right, the motion has been made and seconded. Is anybody like to make any comments on another move and second? Any comments upon Go ahead. Up, uh, comments upon upon the continuance? Well, just that you know, I prepared to discuss this this evening, and you know, researched the past few years of proceedings and looked at the drawings again and read public comment. And it's a significant investment in my time to do that, and so I guess putting it off for February. It does cost us individually something. So in general, I'm always happy to hear good explanations for why that process is necessary. I understand there's not an explanation tonight, but I just want to go on record saying I have a problem with continuances for the sake of continuances. Any other comments or questions? For that, let's move to a vote. Um, Well, I guess we go around the table. So, right. Yes. Yeah. Shagman, yes. 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 And yes, so it's five votes. It's unanimous to continue. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'm just wanted to uh, turning now to uh, the docket. Again, uh, we are now, unless we have any further refusal, we are now back to our full. Voting uh, five member boards, myself, Swanson, Mr. Delisle, uh, Mr. Bennett, and Mr. Chang, and uh, thank you, Ms. Scow, and Ms. Um, okay, uh, we'll now move, we're going to jump over uh, 
2057th Street one moment, only to deal with one more continuance and it would go. Um, this is um, a um, also a we're taking no action on this, or we have to take any action on this. Is, it's an appeal. Um, and this is the matter of Lisa Freeman and Pam Doherty, 34 Lime Street. Uh, that matter is an appeal to enforce an order. Um, that matter has been withdrawn, withdrawn uh, by the appellants. So in that respect, uh, it is their it's their privilege um, as a appellant in that procedural matter. I believe we, we sought um, review or by we I believe um, the court had sought um, review from Copenhagen and Page just to ensure how best we should proceed. Um, so we don't take any action and just correct people wrong. We need to take a vote of any kind just to acknowledge the record that it's going to be Correct. Just acknowledging that they're right. All right. So as chair, I'm just simply going to acknowledge um, the receipt of the the transmittal of a letter um, of extra, the applicant exercising, sorry, the appellant actually exercising their right to um, notify and withdraw their um, request to have their appeal heard. Um, there's no action in board to be on that. Um, finally, um, we have a, I might have to take this on now. This is um, in the business meeting matters, a request for minor modification on North 10th Street. Um, and it, we have a request before us um, to continue that matter to 124 23. Um, and um, if anyone here wishes to speak in connection with that minor modification request, um, if anyone online, see no hands. Um, we will keep back on the request, and uh, we have um, requested the applicant seeking a continuance on one Kent Street, um, and it is a request for minor modification there with the date of one twenty four. Um, members of CBA, we have a um, motion to approve that request. Uh, so moved, Antoine. Thank you, Mr. Swan. And we have a second. I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Blount. Motion is made on the request by the applicant on 1 Kent Street to continue the minor modification request 124. Motion made by Mr. Swan and seconded by Mr. Blount. Calling the roll, Mr. Swan. Yes. Mr. Blount. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Bob Chairman, I vote yes. It's five in the affirmative. The ayes have a motion carries that minor modification request is continued to 124 23. Uh, and so with that, we'll speak back to our first sub substantive application that's before us. Back in the public hearing section, number two on the uh, agenda for this evening. This is the uh, matter of Mark May and Karen Lisa, the Indian Teller from Costa, LLC. Uh, this is a continuation of an application from uh, October 25th, 2022, for the property address of 2057th Street on the land. It is a request to construct a roof deck and related modifications to the single family structure and extend upward a non conforming front and side yard section. Captain. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, once again, I'm uh, Ben Taylor, uh, New Town and Costa, 30 Green Street, New Report, not the record. I'm here on behalf of the applicants, uh, Mark and Christine Nagel, the owners of the property. Uh, with me is Eileen Graff of Graff Architects to go over the design here. Um, what we have tonight is a request for a special permit for an upward extension of non conformities uh, located at 2057th Street, uh, on Island. Here, the next slide, please. Um, so the existing conditions, this is located in the R3 and PIOD zoning districts. Uh, it's a single family residence uh, originally constructed in 1930, according to the assessor records. Uh, the structure has undergone some significant changes over time. Uh, primarily, uh, there was a new foundation installed in 1981. It actually raised the height of the building. Uh, and then also around 1985, uh, there was a uh, deck on the on the side elevation of the structure that was enclosed and incorporated into part of the building and you should be able to see uh, some photos later on in our presentation that you can see where the, um, the roof is slightly different on that. Um, also important it's a corner lot it has frontage both on 57th street and also reservation terrace. Um, somewhat unique here is, is uh, both sides have 70 feet of frontage so in that case you designate uh, one side is the primary front yard and the other will be the secondary front yard. Uh, here we've designated 57th Street as the front yard. Um, and then, uh, let's see. So with that, the, the property has some uh, non-conformities predictably, uh, with it being a 70 by 70 lot. It's uh, 4,900 square feet uh, with a 12,000 square foot minimum. 
Uh, the primary front yard along 57th Street is set back 90 feet, where there's a 20 foot setback minimum there. Uh, secondary front yard along Reservation Terrace, we're almost there, but not quite at 19.8 feet. Uh, the side yard setback opposite uh, the Reservation Terrace side is set back 8.9 feet. Uh, that's also a 20 foot minimum uh, lot coverage. Again, being a small lot, it's 29.6% uh, or 20 is the maximum. And with being in the PIOD, uh, the FAR is also non conforming at 0 0.515, where there's a 0 0.25 maximum. Uh, the property otherwise does conform to rear yard setback, open space, building height, and parking. We just go to the next slide, please. Um, so here is the secondary uh, front yard elevation, or is the portion of it. Uh, we're viewing this from Reservation Terrace. Uh, in front of you is actually the, the driveway where there's um, where, where the uh, owners park. Here, the next slide. Um, so this is looking from the corner of 57th Street and Reservation Terrace. Again, you can see the, the, main, the secondary front yard elevation uh, that you can see in the prior photo. You can also see, start to see the primary front yard elevation on the left side there. Next slide, please. Um, again, so moving down uh, 57th Street towards the ocean, uh, this is the primary front yard. Uh, you can start to see the, the roof on the far left start to slope down where it's otherwise a, a flat roof in the middle. Uh, go down to that next slide, please, Andy. Again, moving down further. You can start to see the side elevation. Uh, you see the roof slightly change. So uh, that's where we think the um, deck that was enclosed uh, used to exist before they built that up in uh, 1985. Next slide. And then here's the full side elevation looking back down 57th Street, that would be back to the ocean. Go to the next slide now, please. Um, so the proposal here, as I mentioned, is to uh, construct a roof deck over a portion of the existing structure. Uh, this will occur entirely within the existing footprint. So some interior changes and window changes, but we're here tonight to talk about the upward extension of the um, existing primary front yard and side yard setback on conformities. Uh, also, the FAR will not change, and there's no new non conformities being created. Um, here, because the deck is uh, at least 30 inches above grade, it's obviously much higher than that. Um, you have to apply the setback requirements for structures uh, according to the ordinance. Um, so, therefore, it constitutes an upward extension of the front and side yard setback non conformities here. Um, so, we have the next slide, please. So here's the site plan. So the solid uh, black box, that is the footprint of the proposed roof deck. The rest of the uh, square there with the dashes is the uh, building footprint itself, the rest of the building. So as you can see, there's some extensive uh, decking around the rest of the structure. Um, that's all I have for that slide right now. Next slide for Andy. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tyler and Graf. Uh, to go over the design here. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. So, um, if you don't mind, can we slide back to the site plan? Just to one minute more. Thank you. So, as Ben mentioned, that dark line is the roof deck proposed, and I just want to orient the what I'll call um, the slope roof that we're hoping to lift and make flat. And if you look at that dark uh, rectangle, the long edge that's furthest from Reservation Terrace and closest to the ocean, along that back edge there, the side property line, is where that slope roof is. And if you look to the left of that, there's a small rectangle. I'll call it a nub for now. And that also has this shallow pitched roof and um, that we are proposing to change and, and raise the wall height and make it a flat roof. Um, so I will then um, point that out on the exterior elevations on the next slide, please. So the top left here, as Ben mentioned, this is the front elevation to 57, uh, sorry, Reservation Terrace. Um, to the right on that on that elevation, front elevation, you'll see that sloped uh, pitch there. Shed. That's part of the roof on that nub I was referencing. And then on the right, top right drawing, it turns. It's a, it's what's technically the considered the rear on this property, um, and that too demonstrates that nub and the and the low pitch there. 
um, within this volume of space, the, the, the top of wall or the ceiling height is six foot six. So this is what's driving the need to want to uh, lift it up and not feel so compressed in that living space. Um, again, it's living space right now. There's no change to FAR. So it's simply just making it flat um, to, to improve the living space as it currently is. Um, and if we just slide to the next elevation, I'll continue on the existing. So that top left drawing is the elevation that's furthest from Reservation Terrace. Again, you can see the change in roof pitch. The original form was that hip with it, with you can see the um, chimney there. And so we, um, so we're trying to again take that pitch and just uh, shallow pitch and just lift it to be flat. And on the top right drawing, um, again, it's the left side of that elevation that we're trying um, to flatten. So if we actually go um, back to the first elevation sheet, just to walk through the proposed. So here. Um, bottom left drawing, you could see the original hip roof, no change to the front, other than adding just a little bit of a covering over the front floor so that all the weather or rain doesn't pour on your head as it comes down the hip roof. Um, but what you can see to the right, you'll see that spiral stair, but right behind it is that nub that I was referencing, and that's where we're trying to just lift it to have the same um, eight foot ceiling height as the rest of uh, the house. Um, and then, as you can see on the paint lines, that's the proposed deck behind. Um, we are not, uh, that deck itself is no taller than the existing ridge of that hip roof um, and sits behind it. Um, the total of that deck on the top is 20 by 30. Um, and it would be accessed with the introduction of that spiral stair that's coming off of the existing deck. Um, and if we go to the next slide, you can see it on the other elevations. And on the bottom left, you can see the lift of that roof, that lower shallow pitch roof. And you'll also see some, some minor changes to the window, excuse me, window and door fenestrations, and then the roof deck up above it. And then lastly, the bottom right drawing from the 57th Street elevation, you can see it from the side. Um, one thing I do want to point out is while it feels like there's currently a lot of deck space as as there it shows it shows on on pretty much every elevation, most of it is elevated walkway, you know, uh, probably about three and a half, four feet wide. So why we're hoping to add this roof deck is so that it gives them some gathering space for outdoors. Um, they have um, Mark and Christine have four adult children who live in, in the area and when they come with their families, um, they just uh, uh, quickly take over what's left for outdoor deck space. So that we're just they're just trying to expand with a roof deck and uh, leave minimal no changes to the to the um, to the uh, to the land as far as um, where it stands, you have other than the introduction of that spiral, which goes beyond the footprint, but otherwise it sits all above the existing structure. Um, and with that, and you know, the site, the uh, what I'm showing is vertical boarding um, would go underneath so that we hide some of that the supports and the empty volume underneath the deck, but otherwise trying to preserve the uh, the roof type they 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 appreciate and like the um, cottage uh, hip roof form. They didn't want it to overtake that. Um, and if, if we go one more slide, we could show a little rendering just to help sort of give it some context that it was meant to sit behind that hip roof um, structure um, and just sort of modestly stay low. Um, you know as Ben mentioned in the 80s, it was lift, the cottage was lifted and put on a concrete foundation. But generally speaking, it's it's a, it's still feeling like a one story, one and a half story in comparison to the neighborhood. Um, so with that, I will pass it back to Ben. And should the board have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. <coughs> Thank you, Eileen. Uh, so just go to the next slide, please, Andy. Um, all right, so now the criteria. 
Um, a little bit different, but mostly the same of what we usually see in the residential districts. Uh, so with the PIOD, the determination from the board that proposed alteration to the non conforming structure uh, shall be not substantially more detrimental to the existing non conforming uh, than the existing non conforming structure uh, to the neighborhood or the PIOD itself. Um, you know, it's not part of the criteria. We'll mention here again that it creates no new non conformities. It's entirely within the existing building footprint. Uh, to, this, to the main point that it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood or the PIOD than what exists currently. Um, as I mentioned, no living space is being added. FAR is not changing. Um, also important here, and I think you see this driving around Plum Island, is that a lot of structures you know, do have various pieces added on and, and changed over time. Um, so in the context of, of the changes that have, that have uh, happened to this structure, um, we feel it's less significant to add the, the roof deck uh, than if we just had the original, you know, box cottage that existed there. Um, so, you know, and also looking around the neighborhood, Plum Island, in Plum Island generally, you do see a lot of widow's walks, a lot of roof decks, a lot of uh, second story, you know, or, or higher decks around the neighborhood. In fact, actually, the uh, application on the agenda after us is, is an extension of the second story roof deck. Um, so I think if we go to the next few slides, we provided some documentation of this. Um, so the, the green square, this is the assessor's map. The green square is, is, the, is our property. The red circles are the following photos are going to show you. So this wasn't, you know, driving around cherry picking just any you know, houses on Plum Island. These are actually within the vicinity of this property. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this is 2457th Street. This is actually the next house down on the right side of 57th Street. You can see the uh, roof deck was walk there. Next slide, please. Uh, this is 10 Reservation Terrace. Again, you can see uh, second story elevated deck. You can also see the uh, roof deck on the top of the house there. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, 1755th Street. Again, a, a second story with those walk type structure on there. Uh, next slide, please. This is 21 Reservation Terrace. Uh, again, you can see an elevated deck on the upper uh, elevation there, as well as below it on the, on the second story. Um, and also the, the houses near it do have some extensive decking. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is 2755th Street. Um, this photo didn't capture, but there is a uh, Store a, a deck on the second level on the front of the house, but also here this is a relatively new uh, addition that uh, expanded upward um, foundation there. So next slide. Uh, this is for Grant Street. Uh, again, you see an elevated deck on the inside of the house. Next slide. Uh, 555th Street, a lot of decking going on. Uh, the widow's walk on the top level, and then the second uh, story windows. You know, decking in uh, various portions there. Next slide. Uh, this is 1657 Street. This is actually across the street on Reservation Terrace, uh, going back towards uh, Northern Boulevard. Uh, so again, you can see the second story elevated deck there. A few more. So again, this is uh, 18, sorry. That's, Street that sorry, a little uh, screen share is working. <laughs> so again, this is another house within the vicinity of the larger neighborhood. Uh, again, you have a pretty extensive roof deck uh, in that situation. So next slide, please. Uh, and then finally, uh, 23 Reservation Terrace. Again, very fairly significant uh, elevated deck there. Um, wrapping around you know, the entire or big portion of the structure. Um, so with that, just the, the point of sharing these photos is, you know, going around Plum Island, you do see a lot of property owners utilizing you know, the views and, and having um, fairly large elevated uh, decks on their structures. So in, in helping you determine that this is substantially, or not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, um, you know, we think this is important to keep in mind. And I think with that, that's all I have for comments this evening, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about our application. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Attorney Taylor, and uh, thanks to Scrap for the presentation. So with that, we'll close the um, 
presentation portion of the public hearing, and we will go in public comment. Uh, we'll begin with uh, anyone in the room who wishes uh, to be heard in connection with this application, either uh, for or against, or someone like that. Uh, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, be recognized. Seeing no hands, uh, we will go to any attendees that are logged on via Zoom. Um, if you uh, wish to be heard, just kindly uh, make yourself known by raising your hand on Zoom. We will recognize you by name and hear your thoughts. Seeing no hands, um, when once, only twice, I will close the public comment section on the public hearing. We'll go right into questions from the board. We'll begin with the key one. Um, yeah, my first question is, what is the height um, on the floor of the deck to the ground? Um, so the height, yeah, from the floor to the ground is 21 and a half feet. I believe it's on the bottom right left. Let's see it down. All right, thank you. By the way, I, I appreciate the architect showing the floor and that's the or existing and proposed on the same page. Helpful. Um, I do not have any questions. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Block. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't have any questions here. All right, we can run along with Mr. Bennett. I have no questions. Thank you, sir. Chair, uh, no questions, Chair. Let's go. Uh, I just have one question. Um, have you spoken to any of the neighbors and does anybody have any objections or, or consents to, to the plan? Uh, yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so we did receive one uh, butter letter of non-opposition. Um, so I have that here. And when we did ask the um, owners to you know, canvas the neighbor, neighborhood and reach out to their butters, um, unfortunately not too many were around. Some of these homes are seasonal. Um, but the consensus was that this is a pretty you know, tight knit neighborhood um, where you know, everyone knows each other and gets along well. And this way. Hi, yes. The photos that we saw were of more traditional first and second story decks and you know, modest widow's walk. Are there other properties where, like in what is proposed, the deck runs the entire length of the house and also rises some feet above the? Root peak. So I think that there are. I think there are examples on Plum Island uh, where you do have like actual you know roof decks that are on fairly newer homes than this. Um, I, I don't. I didn't include them in my photo, but I did take a drive out there today along Northern Boulevard. Um, there are some newer structures. I think actually near uh, the foot of Fifty Seventh Street that appear to have fairly large roof decks that take up a fairly large chunk of the, the building footprint, if you will. And, and, and sorry, and also where the, the roof deck will sit higher than the roof peak, in other words, it's by a few feet? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there are in the immediate vicinity of the neighborhood. I, I didn't honestly okay. research. I'm just asking yeah. it's not familiar that it looks different than the roof decks in the photos you sent, just asking, mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah, I'm wondering, um, Caitlin, can you go to the maybe the first photograph, the property that's right behind? Yeah, I, well, I, I understand the question, and you're trying to understand scale if there's a rooftop deck that's of the same length. Um, I feel like this one, and I think the next one down, is, is more, while they're on hip roofs, it's more of a uh, sort of example of... Um, the scale of the existing building and then rooftop rooftop deck going even beyond the ridge. So I feel like uh, where this structure is so low in scale, sort of hugging the ground, if you will, in comparison to some of these actually, some of the structures shown, while I know that the intent was to convey the different types of roof decks in the area, I think of it more as a documentation of the scale of all the buildings abutting this property. And in relation to those, uh, a lot of those feel like three-story structures once you add the um, the, the basement uh, foundation level. Yeah. So especially in some of the sloping properties. So I understand your question as far as, far as the length, but at the same rate, I feel like the, the, the way that this property 
hugs the ground more um, helps offset some of the, the sort of scale and like in comparison. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, hearing none, we will close the um, questions to the board section and go into deliberations. And we'll begin with the swan. And again, we are uh, we'll deliberate around the criteria for a special permit tonight before we so kindly just uh, get the rest of the deliberations around the criteria. Um, well, the criteria is has a lot to do with whether this is more detrimental to its neighborhood and the prior festival in general. Um, you know, this house is already not conforming in most of all dimensions. Um, and it's also has twice the density, 0.51 bar of the standard, of the standard maximum of 0.25. So, you know, on the one hand, this house is, um, not conforming in the area, front end, setbacks, density, Pretty much everything, not quite everything, maybe one or two. Um, on the other hand, it's a deck. And it probably doesn't really increase the density of the use, and therefore probably is not harmful to the immediate neighborhood of the pile in general. So I can reluctantly support this part definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would agree with Mr. Swanton uh, with respect to this application. Uh, while it is a large deck on the top of the roof, it doesn't uh, influence the bar or the lot coverage or anything beyond what it already exists, and the footprint does not change. So, for those reasons, uh, I can support this uh, application as well. Thank you, Mr. Miles. Yeah, I, I will uh, echo those comments. Uh, following up with extension, um, uh, far significantly, as Mr. Swan indicated, the far is not increased here. This would be a different story if that was the case. Or if that were an enclosed area, somebody would have the actual wiggle space. So, um, and as to the, the architectural consistency <laughs> and mass and scale, uh, I'm always uh, impressed with the creativity of the architects who uh, give addition to go on Palm Island. I don't think there's any particular common theme. I guess the common theme is that there's no common theme. However, one, one consistent thread is that obviously uh, decks are highly uh, uh, value. Uh, so, uh, for all of those reasons, uh, I, I can All right. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. And Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll agree with my colleagues that I can uh, support the application. Very good. Yes, I would also echo the same comments and support the application. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Same. Very good. Uh, I agree. Uh, I think that it's certainly not. Substantially more detrimental if it's more detrimental at all. So uh, um, I uh, confirm my colleagues and, and also support it. Um, are, there any, are there any other deliberations? Seeing no hands, we'll close deliberations. And uh, do I have a motion to approve? Um, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve CNC 22 27 2057 Street. Uh, Construct a roof deck and related modifications to single family structure extending upward, non conforming in front and side setbacks. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Malala. I'm going to take that a second. I will. Thank you. Mr. Bennett, I'm going to take that a second. Mr. Malala, second by Mr. Bennett, calling the roll on the motion to approve the special permit for non conformities on uh, 2057th Street. Mr. Swan. Yes. Mr. Malala? Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Well, can I have a vote yes with five of the affirmative? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, and uh, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right. Um, moving to our last uh, public hearing this evening. This is a matter also continued from 
1025-22. Uh, the application of Ashley Batari uh, on the property address of 854. This is a, a special permit for non-conformities. The applicant seeks any um, any or all permits um, uh, required to construct or expand a second level deck. And uh, with that, I believe we have both um, applicants um, joining us via Zoom. And so, um, uh, Sean and Ashley, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear us? Very good. We can. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, good evening. Uh, well, you uh, could just introduce yourself uh, and your address. So of course, we presume to know um, who you are uh, for our record. And uh, I'm sorry. We also have the architect. Very good. And your architect is here with us this evening. Um, and uh, were you presenting, sir? I, I was going to, but. Uh, I have no problem with Zoom. I apologize. Uh, I think um, it's a uh, new technology. It's wonderful. We, uh, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's my fault. But it's okay. I was aware that you were uh, no problem. But I forgot. You thought I looked like Santa Claus with a big beard, and I took out my hat. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, but it was well. Thanksgiving, and I didn't bring him a turkey. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for being here, sir. Do uh, yourself. Right? Yes, my name is Dave Gleason from Gleason Architects. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board and staff that helped me greatly with this uh, presentation. I truly appreciate it. Um, the first slide we see is the, uh, the overall site. Uh, you can see where it's located within a, the neighborhood. Um, we'll go to the second one. These are some pictures that uh, indicate what the um, building looks like, the house looks like. Uh, I was able to get these from previous application that you guys were able to, to give us so we can make it part of the presentation. Uh, the next slide. This is the, uh, the the deck and the situation we have with the deck. And honestly, the situation we have with this deck is it's uh, it needs some help. It uh, uh, probably isn't as safe as it could be. Um, and in looking at that condition and looking at uh, the potential use of it all, um, the owners uh, discussed with me possibly the extension uh, of that deck along the back side of the house. And uh, with that being uh, looked at, uh, I looked at where that stair should be. And uh, we'll, I'll show you the stable when we get to some drawings. But. Um, you can see the condition of the deck, and it definitely needs some help. You can go to the next one. Um, the columns are not as substantial as they might be. And the next one. This is the deck. This is the uh, the patio down below. You can see that there's very there really isn't any vegetation to speak of. It's mostly sand. And if you look at how it's supported, it's uh, it got the concrete. Um, kind of tubes, and we, we propose to change those as well. Uh, we'll look at the next one. We did get a zoning determination, um, which is what brought us to this. And then we looked at the uh, zoning matrix, which I had fun putting together with staff's help. <laughs> uh, effectively, we're not changing any part of the, the building, and we're not. Uh, proposing to increase in height. Uh, the only thing that we are proposing is that we extend the deck laterally to within the setback of the property. So we're not going to go outside that setback of the, uh, of, of the property. Uh, we'll keep the current setback. Uh, on, if you look at the upper piece, we can go back there. You can see on the uh, where the new deck is, the, the highlighted line, is, um, the, the, that horizontal line is is the uh, limit of the current deck, and all we're doing is uh, we're taking it to ten feet on that left side, uh, and a stair would be on the, the right side, and we would that would be within uh, the setback requirements that uh, is in the zone. And then we come up at the next slide. Um, I focused on the um, the deck rather than focusing on the, the building or the house because we're not really doing anything to the house per se. 
Uh, when we were looking at possibly putting a couple of sliders on the on the back side, uh, I think that might still be in conversation whether we actually do that or not. Uh, and you can see the supports are more substantial than we had before, so I'm comfortable that this deck will be uh, much more structurally sound and safe than the previous one. And then I can go to the next one. Um, I'm showing the, uh, the, the lower uh, right is what's there, and I'm showing the uh, footings that we're proposing so you can see where they're going to go. And the upper is the second floor uh, deck, but you can see how we're going to support that um, below. Um, I think that pretty much covers it all. So uh, I, I think what's motivating this uh, this application is the fact that the uh, uh, the deck needs to be replaced. And if we're going to replace it, what, let's 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 do something more significant and keep it within the setbacks so that we don't violate the any of the setbacks of the, of the zone. And I think we've done that. And uh, we'll take any questions if you have. All right, thank you, Mr. Police. Uh, we uh, we and uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, we will close the uh, presentation portion of the public hearing and I'll go to public comment. Anyone in the room uh, who will be speaking to the application, uh, feel free to raise your hand and we will recognize you. Seeing no hands, uh, anyone on uh, on Zoom? I see one hand, um, uh, the applicant, uh, Sean Bakari. Um, Sean, do you want to introduce you tonight and introduce yourself to the floor? Great. Thank you very much. And Dave, thank you for speaking on our behalf and for all your work thus far. I'm with my wife, Ashley. We're out of state, otherwise we'd be there in person. And to echo what Dave mentioned, um, we're looking for approval for our deck project because it's simply unsafe. And um, with our now two-year-old twin girls, we would like to use our deck in a safe man man manner. And our hope is that we could increase the current 10 by 12 size to 10 by 30 size. Um, we moved here to 8 Barker Street in 2016. We've never touched the deck, but now is the time. We don't have a choice um, due to how unsafe it is. And um, one more thing I'd like to add is that we spoke to all of our neighbors. We have nine letters of support from our neighbors and abutters. And um, uh, yeah, so I guess, I guess that's all I'd like to add. And I'll just leave it at that. And uh, I thank you all for your time. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Bakhtiari. Uh, and uh, any seeing no other hands, uh, well, actually, does anyone else online uh, wish to uh, be heard from? Going once, going twice. <clears throat> okay. Um, seeing none, we'll close the public comment section and go to questions from the board and begin with this one. Um, yeah, I just have one question. What about the uh, one matrix? There it is. Um, if I look at your side A setback, um, the requirement is 20 feet. You're currently well, well better than that, 4.2. Yet you're going all the way down to 10. Um, and I just want to make sure I understand this. So this is, you're becoming non conforming in another dimension. Now I realize our rules let you do that, but I just want to make sure I'm, I'm following here. So, this is one of the few dimensions this property is conforming, and you're now going all the way down to the minimum of 10, uh, which is beyond the required dimension. So when it says, it used to say uh, extend, now it's just nothing there. I guess I'm, I guess I don't have a question. I'm just kind of pointing out that it's, it's odd to me. If you're, you're lucky you're on Plum Island. If you're on the mainland, this would be a new non-conformity, and we'd have to put right. that into consideration. So, having made that little remark, I'm just going to have no other questions. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Lott. Uh, I noticed the same thing, so I have no question. Mr. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Can, could you? Uh, I'm looking at a picture here, which. Totally 
I'm just trying to understand this picture shows me that there. I see, I see more than 24 feet, two and a half inches. What to the existing how is that correct? Yes. Okay. And now you're intruding in that. And what is that the is that an existing deck here? I see stair well. Well, there is that what's going on? Oh, on, on this plan? Yeah, yeah. Um, the you can see that I, I highlighted where the existing deck is and the existing stairs. And the reason with that extension is I needed a way to get down that stair. But and in, or, in order for me to do that, I needed to extend out um, like 42 inches in order to get to the landing to get downstairs. Okay, the deck that's extending. Yes. Yeah. So really, that's just the landing that goes down to the to the stairs that goes down. Okay. I've got no other questions, Chair. Um, I, I see a note in our materials that the Conservation Commission will also need to review this. Yes, I think we're set up on the fifth for that. Um, we, we, I missed the, the prior meeting with all the activity going on this, this month, and so we will be back to conservation on the fifth. I think it is the date. I think that's the date. Yeah. And any any expectations from that meeting? As I, I, I fully expect we'll meet the criteria. We're uh, we're not going to have concrete and ground, and we're not disturbing vegetation. And, um, we're going to be totally compliant with um, the rules. So you know. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Inspector. Right, Scott, um, my question okay. is just right, the planning is most down on Diamond Pier. Yes. And so that makes sense. So yes. It's you know, pretty prototypical and very familiar to conservation that that technique be used um, in that instance. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I have no other questions. And unless there are any other questions from the board, we'll close questions and go into deliberation. Again, we're deliberating the, uh, the criteria. Um, for a uh, thank you. Yeah, and this reminds me of the last one we looked at. Um, it was a building as far as not more than double, almost double. It's it's out of compliance in almost all areas, and we're adding yet another one to that. Um, yet on the other hand, it's just a cat. So I can't, you know, it's just to me the irony of it being easier to do things on Palm Island and the barrier to reach that on the main road. It's just frightening to me. So having said all that, it should be dead. And um, I, I, therefore, I do not think the debt is more detrimental to either his neighborhood or to my region. So I can support this. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would echo what Mr. Swanton said again uh, for this application. I will do likewise. I'll incorporate my reference to my <laughs> comments with my couple of lines. Mark Sweeney incorporated that. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'll just say I agree. Okay. And now Ms. Scow. I agree as well. Respect. Likewise. I agree as well. Uh, we'll get back with further. Uh, any further deliberations from any member of the board? Seeing, seeing no gestures forward or lunges forward, um, I will close the uh, uh, deliberations and go into the vote. Uh, do we have a uh, member with a vote? I will move the uh, application DNC 22 29. To construct expand the second level of deck. Uh, be approved. All right, thank you, Mr. Pennant. Uh, we'll second. I'll second, Mr. Shagger. Very good. Motion made by Mr. Pennant and seconded by Mr. Shagger. Thank you. I'm calling the roll. Uh, Mr. Swanton. Yes. Wild. Yes. Bennett. Yeah. Chen. Yes. Um, Chen Penny vote yes. That is five in the affirmative. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Deck is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck, uh, good luck, guys, and uh, to you. Thank yes, you. and I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, thank you, Sandra. Yes, thank you. Oh, oh. thank you. Check. It. It will no be not cold in your spot. <laughs> Mr. Chan just got himself in the naughty list. I don't want to. Okay. okay. Yeah.
Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, with that, we uh, yes. Can please ask a process question. Sure. I'm a fairly new person, just so I understand. Um, why is it that the applicant speaks in public comment rather than as the applicant? In other words, is the applicant also the public, or is there, or is it because we don't know if there's an applicant, um, or is that just how it is? I'm just I trying to understand. Yeah, so it's a, that's a fair question. Um, the applicant's member of the public, and so they may choose to speak uh, if they wish as part of the presentation, and then they may also voice their support. Uh, it would be really unusual for them to force any other than support. We, <laughs> but it still could happen. But um, but they they wish to add additional commentary that's not really part of the presentation pro forma per se. They may just simply want to add commentary about the neighbors they spoke with or other things that are ancillary but um, relevant. So um, any member of the public, you know, every member let me phrase it differently. No member of the public. No matter what other label they wear, is disqualified from speaking when it comes to public. That's the macro category. They are within that macro category, also a micro category of applicant, but they're still inside of that bigger bubble. So we treat them with that. Okay, I understand. Thank you for explaining. Um, yeah, but it's a good question. So it works. Um, any other comments uh, or questions before we close the public hearing section? Okay. Uh, with that, we'll close public hearings, uh, go into business meeting. Having taken care of uh, letter A uh, on the street, we simply have before us the approval of the minutes for both October 11th and October 25th. Um, I guess we'll start with October 11th. Are there any comments, revisions, changes, questions, requests of uh, this joy on um, minutes of 10, 11, 22? Yeah. Um, any comments, revisions, changes, requests, or questions on the minutes of 10 25? Also, no. All right. Uh, do we, we can take these together? Um, we have a motion to approve the minutes of 10 11 22 and 10 25 22 in the second. So move on to the one. Thank you. I second that. Thank you, Mr. Lawn. With the debate and second, um, call the roll on the motion to approve both sets of minutes. And we'll just do the roll call, Mr. Swan. Yes. Mr. Lyle. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Chairman. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Ms. Pregnant. Yes. Chair Penny. Yes. That is said in the affirmative. I just have it. Um, both meeting minutes are approved. Um, and then review draft decision two measures. What, what are we looking to do? Uh, just if the board has any particular changes to the language, otherwise, uh, payment is provided that decision that should be looked at across the board vote, uh, and it could be followed as far as that. Just all the one about the board. I appreciate that. Um, is anyone, I mean, has everyone seen that? that okay. Um, and um, any comments or any final past changes that you want to bring to, um, and your table's attention. No. All right. Um, I don't have any either. So uh, I guess that's why it looks like we, we, we have no comments. So I'll uh, just do this. Sure. I guess I think all of you might be all of these things. We'll take a motion to approve those. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So we'll move. All right. Motion made and seconded by uh, Mr. Watt. I'll second that. Gesturing that way. Um, <laughs> um, Calling the roll on the uh, we, the board's uh, assent to the uh, draft decision on two Neptune Street as presented and as written, uh, being ready to file the report. Um, Mr. Swan, yes. Mr. Wild, yes. Mr. Bennett, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. Ms. Scow, yes. And Ms. Packer, yes. I'll check that again. Seven in the affirmative. We have our blessing. Thank you. Um, so um, I have no other updates from the, from the chair. I will say. Uh, as and I think you guys all uh, saw my email to the extent to which, if at all, there is a circle back on the STR U uh, appeal. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. If you don't know, I, I uh, my wife and I uh, own two cottages in Plum Island. We use them and uh, also host them uh, Airbnb. So I believe that is um, you know, more than on point enough. Um, also, I have to know personally one of the very vocal. Uh, opponents. Uh, so I just, uh, you know, all the questions about uh, one of the um, individuals who voice opinion in connection with that. Um, and so uh, I have to do this. So if it comes back, um, I won't be involved in that uh, beyond the administration of technology and withdrawal season. So um, I just noted that for the record and put that in writing as well. Um, unless I ask a question, reference to that. <coughs> 
So that application came before us and, and was withdrawn. Is that only going to be when someone gets a cease and desist? Is that the only time that'll come before our board? Uh, correct. So we said for the zoning administrator and it should be enforceable in response to their request. Yeah. And that instance where the uh, the party, you know, would be by that uh, voting determination, uh, they actually would do that argument. I think it's uh, the argument uh, this argument to the board, but um, you would be seeing that appeal come to you. So uh, it could be an appeal of anything. Um, yeah, but uh, but in connection with the short term rentals, that's the that's the only vehicle oh, that they yeah. would ever come before oh, the board. Sorry, yeah. but I understand better. Sorry, uh, if, if the council has been in discussion about a zoning amendment for over two years now, right? Um, there's been big various iterations, so I guess it probably depends on whether the council adopts the zoning that might require a special permit for the DBA or otherwise. Um, there's been various levels of permitting suggested by council over the years. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what will ultimately get adopted. Uh, there isn't currently a zoning amendment for the council, but there is a licensing provision committee. Um, uh, I, there may be another attempt to say early next year, maybe, um, but we need to revisit this matter. That would be the, I think, the fifth or sixth time. Um, but, um, but that would be an instance in which it isn't an appeal, but an actual part of the application. Otherwise, um, there's been a, a lot of, uh, you know, something here that a lot of us to go by licensing. So, right. and then uh, also only a limited degree of what we're going to look at. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right. Any other? Uh, any other comments or questions before we adjourn? All right, so now we have a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Right. Debate and seconded. While all those in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any votes? Any abstentions? None. Aye. 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 Aye.